dairy farm in Gilbert, Arizona. You can see the cows behind us. This is the first time that we've come to a dairy farm like this and as soon as we got out of the car, the smell just hit us. It absolutely stinks, especially in this heat. And it's extraordinary to see how the cows are just packed into these small areas where they're you know, looking for shade because it's so hot out and the smell is absolutely atrocious. I'm, I can't even describe it. You kind of need to experience it, but um, wow, it's intense. So all of these cows in the background here, they're all mothers. They've all been forcibly impregnated and they've had their babies stolen from them uh, so that we humans can steal their milk because, you know, we like to drink milk and eat cheese and yogurt and ice cream, all those dairy products. And so the babies can't stay with their mothers, otherwise the babies will drink the milk. If we want to take the milk, we have to take the babies away from the mothers. So it's so incredibly sad to see them. I mean, we know this story, you know, we've seen them uh, on video videos uh, so many times but to see them in real life it's kind of just heartbreaking and they have their children stolen over and over and over again for many many years like four five sometimes up to six or seven years until they're completely spent and their bodies just break down they're exhausted from being forcibly impregnated and giving birth and having to be over milked uh, their entire lives and eventually all of these uh, female cow cows will end up at the slaughterhouse uh, being murdered for meat. So, you know, they're sold for cheap hamburger meat here in the US. I mean, I don't agree, but Hi, like you just came water. to give us some water? Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. Everyone comes Thank too, you. Are you from this area? Uh, I live in Gilbert okay. and uh, I work down here. I was driving down and I saw you guys protesting. I was like, oh, thank you. I oh, don't wow. see a cooler. So. Yeah, thank you. Do no you um, do you work in the industry or? Uh, not the uh, dairy industry. I work in the uh, horse industry. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of used to seeing all this yeah, kind of dairy I'm farms. Yeah, used to it. Yeah. Um, what do you think about it? Um, I know there's a lot of, uh, I know there's abuse that goes on. There's absolutely no way you can deny it. Absolutely none. But dairy cows in the farming industry have actually got to be the most, um, I guess, like spoiled. And I don't want to say that because, like I said, there is mistreatment no matter where you go. Yeah. They are definitely like the most spoiled. And you know, her sign's right. It's not our milk. But like, again, there's no way you can say that it is. Yeah. It's absolutely not your so milk. So, what do you mean by spoil? What's your um, um, understanding of that? I guess like from a farming perspective because you know I've, I've lived in Phoenix I lived in the city and I've lived on ranches and I've been everywhere yeah uh, when you see a lot of animals in Arizona they don't have some of them most of them don't have fans they don't have misters a lot of dairy cows as you can see right there they have fans to keep them cool in the summer yeah. to make sure that they don't get sick or overheated and you know places like this you know they're a smaller operation they take good care of their animals a lot of farmers they um, what happens on the day that they have to take them to slaughter though? Uh, actually, I do know what happens that day because what happens? I've been to slaughterhouses. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of Temple Grandin? Yes, I have. I love her. She, um, you know, she does work in the meat industry, but she... So she promotes humane slaughter, right? As so much I... as like it doesn't, it's kind of contradicting, but yes. Okay, so you know, the question is, is how do we kill someone who doesn't want to die? Well, is there I mean, a humane there way is... to do it? the best way you can do that and i don't want to say the best because there is no good way to kill something mm -hmm. or Just someone do it quick yeah or someone like ev all animals have the same rights as humans in my point of view they all live and there's a quote by temple grandin and i definitely agree with her on this it says nature is cruel but we don't have to be we owe them some respect sure so what and if I we don't agree. have to use these animals at all though isn't that better than trying to kill them in a quick way in a humane way why don't we be humane and not use them at all and just drink plant milks instead wouldn't that I make sense i don't even know what plant milk is actually no, can you so explain you, that yeah <laughs> so you still consume dairy um you know when i was a kid i would drink it a lot and yeah. now it's like i i know what goes on and but you eat you know, cheese as, yogurt ice cream yeah, I yeah do. so well, you still like, consume I'm not, dairy i'm not gonna say that i don't sure like, i do yeah like, there's absolutely no reason for me to lie about it yeah i'm not being violent you guys aren't being violent yeah. we're talking well answer. what we're doing yeah absolutely yeah, it's a great yeah. conversation so when you said you're not being violent um what happens is as consumers we're paying for this industry to exist right so if we weren't paying for it they wouldn't be producing it mm -hmm. so the violence happens in the industry because of course for them to end up as meat we have to kill them 
So yeah. the act of killing in and of itself yeah. is violence. So we're paying for it as consumers. Yeah, and when so, I said, like, I'm not being violent, I'm, like, yeah. I'm not being violent towards you. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I, I know what you I mean. meant, okay, I know. Good, good. I'm just extracting that, that yeah, idea. Yeah, I'm gonna stand yeah, absolutely. So we do have plant milks, which means we have milk made of plants. So we have uh, soy milk, almond oh, milk, right. oat milk, yeah. rice milk, coconut milk, hazel milk, the list goes on. We also have cheese made out of plants and yogurt and ice cream and all the dairy products that you're used to eating and enjoy, you can have them made from plants. They're the vegan version, the plant-based version. So basically we don't need to support this industry. We don't need to think of uh, a humane way to take someone's baby away so we can steal their milk. We don't have to think of a humane way to send them down, you know, the, the, the death chute to have their throats slit and heads chopped off. We just don't need to use them at all. Yeah. So isn't that the better option? I do think that there is a better option for that. And I've actually, I'm going to have to give that thing a try because I've never heard of like almond milk cheese. Like right. absolutely never heard of it. Yeah. And I'm trying to like remember everything you said. Yeah, like sure. I can give you some resources at the end of this conversation. Um, the main thing, you know, you were talking about Temple Grandin and her yeah. idea of humane uh, yeah. slaughter, basically. Which, you know, like I said, there is no human way to kill something. That's right. But, someone. you know, she did make it a little better than what they were doing. Like, I'm sure you've seen her movie, you mm -hmm. know, how they would just like throw the cows in and, you know, fingers crossed that it swims. And now she's made it. So, you know, when the cow walks this way, you walk this way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's no shirts or chains, the ca uh, chains, the cow's not scared or as scared because cows are just scared all the damn time. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. So a few things to consider here. Mm -hmm. If we put ourselves in the victim's position, would that be okay for us? I don't think it's okay for any animal. <laughs> That's right. So we can't, we can't justify it if we use the word humane and try all these, you know, smart tactics to kind of trick the animals. They know what's going on. They're smart. They're not yeah. stupid. So if it's not okay for us, then it shouldn't be okay for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So therefore it's not humane. I think, I'm not saying that it is humane. Like I've already made my point, you get it. Yeah, I get I it. I think the thing with, especially in America, and you know, there's other countries too, hmm. is that we're in a time right now when everyone is allowed to give their opinion. Yeah. And at the same time, everyone's worried about everything. So when, you know, we have people like you and we have people like myself who eats meat, you guys don't eat meat, I drink, you know, milk from cows or goats or whatever, you guys like to drink almond milk. Yeah. There's a lot of contradiction and people saying, oh my gosh, look what these people did. Oh my gosh, look what these people did. Like, I've seen plenty of PETA videos of people, uh, they've taken some pictures and one of the pictures was of cows and it, they were standing in like a pile of their own feces. Yeah. And it said that these cows were living like that. And you have to look at it as cows sleep lying down mm -hmm. and contradict Contrary? Popular, contrary to? Yes, con yes. Thank you. That's all right. Contrary to popular belief, horses actually sleep uh, laying down too, mm -hmm. as well. And I'm sure you know this, you're an animal activist, you did your research. Yeah. But um, if those cows were re really actually living in their feces 24 seven, then they would be co covered in feces. So every, every little, I guess, column of society has their own bad eggs. Sure. And I think it's very, very important to remember you have good people like you, you have, you know what, let's hug it out for the camera just oh, to yeah. show, like, this, <laughs> this is fine. This is, no, this is good. This is what it's all about. You know, yeah. we have to have these conversations. So I totally hear everything you're saying. Yeah. And I know that you can look at that footage and, and you know, you're from this farming community. So you're going to say, okay, I can see this. I can see that. Yeah. At the end of the day, the most important thing to remember is that these animals are used. They are bred into existence mm -hmm. solely for our use. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be that way because we can be healthy and happy without bringing them into existence to use them. We have plenty of plant alternatives. In fact, it's better for our health. Mm -hmm. It's better for the environment. So why are we doing it? Because even if they're kept in the most pristine, fantastic conditions, the most idyllic farms, the truth is for dairy to be produced, we still need to take the babies away mm -hmm. so we can steal the milk. Yeah. And ultimately, we keep impregnating them so that they keep producing milk and we have to keep taking those babies away and ultimately when the mother cows are spent they're going to be sent to slaughter to be to be killed the other, for meat um, and so I'm that's gonna, not necessary yeah. is it if, if we don't have to the question is why are we doing it yeah and i remember what i was going to say now yeah you know we are as a society raised on meat we are raised Absolutely. on milk. that's just the way things are mm. 
But they so don't have to be that way, do they? Yeah, that's true. And for someone like me who was raised, you know, eating meat every night, drinking milk every night yeah, as same, a kid. Same, exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, you too. Yeah. It's a little bit hard for us to quit. It's a mm. little bit hard for us to take a step back from our beliefs and realize, mm. you know, yeah. a lot of these industries can be very cool. And I think it's important, and that's, you know, why I came here. I wanted to give you guys the water because I didn't see any water. Yeah, thank you. I'm, and the other thing is, I want to be able to show everyone, you know, just because there's opposing beliefs doesn't mean you can't get along with someone, doesn't mean you can't look them in the eye, have mm -hmm. respect for them, and say, you know what, high five, I'm glad you're standing up for what you believe in. You're right. Because, as you said, they take the babies away. I can't deny that. Yeah. I've seen it. But you can happens. stop contributing to yeah. it, can't and you, by not, that's by not why, paying for the as products. As an adult, once I move out on my own, yeah. I barely even use smoke to begin with now. If I go and ask my parents, hey, can we buy this cheese instead? They're going to say, uh, yeah, buy it once and then go back to the regular stuff because they forget because yeah. that's the way they were raised. Sure. So as an adult, once I move out, I'm able to do that kind of stuff or I can buy my own cheese now. Yep. But it's going to take, you know, more than one person. Absolutely. It's going, yeah. And it, you takes, know that. it takes all of us, I'm but sure. you know, it starts with yeah. one because we all have the power to do it. Yeah. And, you know, it all comes down to education. So mm -hmm. everyone you see here, every vegan you meet, every vegan activist you meet, we all consumed animal products. We've all been raised the same way. Oh, We're yeah. from Australia, exactly the same culture, ate meat, dairy and eggs every single day of our lives. Oh yeah. So it's all about education. Once you know what goes on in the industry, once you know what it does to your body, to the environment, and once you know that it doesn't, you don't have to have it for survival, there's no need and there are plenty of alternatives, then it's simply a matter of connecting um, our mind and our hearts and aligning our actions with our ethics. So if we feel like there's something wrong here in the, in the industry, as you said, it's not humane, there's no need to do it, there are alternatives, so we have to align our actions with our ethics, and once we do that, we realise it's quite simple. We choose the plant foods, we leave the animal products, we leave the animals to, to live their lives the way they choose and we don't have to breathe them into existence. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the education. I'm going to leave you with some resources, but thank you for coming by oh, no and having this conversation and offering some water. It shows to me that you're extremely compassionate, you care, your heart's in the right place. And as I said, it's just a matter of aligning everything that you learn with what you're actually paying for at the store. And then that's how we change the world. Yeah. So well, I hope you guys have a great day. You know, stay safe out here. You know, there's a lot of farmers and, you know, be safe. This is over Queen Creek. People get a little bit, I'm going to say it, butt hurt. Yes. Stay. That's all right. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you so much for no coming problem. by. Have a great day. Thank you. Here's what turned us vegan, this one hour speech. It's so incredible. All the health reasons, the environmental reasons here in Cowspiracy, it's on Netflix. We have websites and support systems that you can follow through. It's nowhere near as hard as you think it is.